Yellowstone supervolcano plan to stop its eruption. There's just one catch. This is the NASA plan unveiled. This is according to Tyler Durden on Zero Hedge. Well, because of the fact that it could uh, create such a global extinction level event, perhaps, uh, NASA plans to stop the Yellowstone supervolcano from erupting and could actually do the reverse. It could actually cause it to blow, triggering a volcanic winter, a nuclear type of winter that could wipe out humanity as we know it. The uh, SHTF plan max level details Scientists at NASA have now come up with an incredibly risky plan to save the United States from this dangerous supervolcano. It's got a numerous, uh, numerous uh, supervolcanoes located in the United States, but this is the one that's the most dangerous. NASA scientists have spoken out about the true threat of supervolcanoes and the risky methods that could be used to prevent devastating eruption. Lying beneath the tranquil, beautiful settings of Yellowstone's National Park in the U.S. lies an enormous magma chamber called the Caldera. It's responsible for the geysers and the hot springs that define the area. Over 60% of the world's geysers are here in Yellowstone National Park. It has over 10,000 hydrothermal areas and not all of them have yet been mapped, can you imagine? Now, for the scientists at NASA, it's also one of the greatest natural threats to human civilization as we know it. Brian Wilcox, a former member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, shares a report on the natural hazard that had not been seen outside of the agency up to now. Following an article published by BBC about supervolcanoes, a group of NASA researchers got in touch with the media to share a report previously unseen outside the space agency about the threat Yellowstone poses and what they hypothesize could possibly not be done about this. Quote, I was a member of the NASA Advisory Council on Planetary Defense, which studied the ways for NASA to defend the planet from asteroids and comets. This is what Brian Wilcox explained. He's of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, at the California Institute of Technology. He says, I came to the conclusion during that study that the supervolcano threat is substantially greater than the asteroid or the comet threat. Okay, so he's in charge of the uh, planetary defense, and he believes that it's not an asteroid or a comet that uh, we're in danger of. Uh, creating our extinction, it's Yellowstone. Now, Yellowstone currently leaks about 60 to 70 percent of its heat into the atmosphere through steam water, which seeps into the magma chamber through the cracks, while the rest of the heat builds up as magma and dissolves into volatile gases. The heat and pressure will reach a threshold, meaning that an explosion is inevitable. When NASA scientists considered the fact that a supervolcano's eruption would plunge the Earth into a volcanic winter, destroying most sources of food, of course, let alone poisoning the water and the, our air that we breathe, starvation would then become a real possibility. Food reserves would only last about 74 days, according to the UN, after an eruption of a supervolcano, like that, that of uh, Yellowstone. And they've devised a risky plan that could end up blowing up in their faces, literally. Wilcox hypothesized if enough heat was removed and the temperature of the supervolcano could be dropped, it would never erupt. But he wants to see a 35% decrease in temperature and how to achieve that is incredibly risky. One possibility is to simply increase the amount of water in the supervolcano. As it turns to steam, the water would release the heat into the atmosphere, making global warming alarmists tremble. It would make our atmosphere even warmer. Can you imagine? 
Quote, building a big aqueduct uphill into a mountainous region would be both costly and difficult, and people don't want their water spent that way, Wilcox said. People are desperate for water all over the world, and so a major infrastructure project where the only way the water is used is to cool down a supervolcano would be very controversial. End quote. So NASA came up with an alternative plan. Here we go. They believe the most valuable solution could be to drill up to 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano and pump down water at very high pressure. The circulating water would return at a temperature of about 350 degrees Celsius, which is a whopping 662 degrees Fahrenheit. And this way, in this way, slowly, day by day, extracting heat from the volcano. And while such a project could come to an estimated cost of about $3.46 billion, it comes with an inciting catch which could convince politicians and taxpayers to make the investment. Quote, Yellowstone currently leaks around 6 gigawatts in heat, Wilcox says. Through drilling in this way, it could be used to create a geothermal plant which generates electric power at extremely competitive prices of around 10 cents per kilowatt hour. You would have to give the geothermal companies incentives to drill somewhat deeper and use hotter, hotter water than they usually would, but you would pay back your initial investment and get electricity which can power the surrounding area for a period of potentially tens of thousands of years. And the long-term benefit is that you prevent a future supervolcano eruption which would devastate humanity. Of course, drilling into a supervolcano comes with its own risks, like the eruption that scientists are desperate to prevent. Triggering an eruption by drilling would be disastrous. Wilcox says, the most important thing with this is to do no harm. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try and cool it from there, this would be very risky. This could make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture, and you might trigger the release of harmful volatile gases in the magma at the top of the chamber, which would otherwise not be released. The cooling of Yellowstone in this manner would also take tens of thousands of years, but it's a plan that scientists at NASA are considering for every supervolcano on Earth, not just Yellowstone. Wilcox says, when people first considered the idea of defending the Earth from an asteroid impact, they reacted in a similar way to the supervolcano threat. People, though, thought, as puny as we are, how can humans possibly prevent an asteroid from hitting the Earth? Well, it turns out if you engineer something which pushes very slightly for a very long time, you can make the asteroid miss the Earth. So the problem turns out to be easier than most people think. In both cases, it requires a scientific community to invest brain power, and you have to start early. But Yellowstone is another matter. Yellowstone explodes roughly every 600,000 years, and it's about 600,000 years since it last exploded, which should cause us to sit up and take notice. So, what would happen? If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help 
the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.